What's up, everybody? I'm Dennis Koyu. Welcome to my studio. Today, I want to show you how I made the club version of my song Next to You, which came out this summer on Protocol Recordings. <laughs> The original idea started with a vocal top line that I got sent by a group of songwriters from Manchester, UK called The Six. I checked it out and I really liked it a lot. Uh, it had some special emotions and a special vibe and I also connected to the lyrics. I just jumped on it and started working on the original mix. And that one was a more laid back crossover dance type of song. I was really happy with it. But then I also realized that I wanted to have a more energetic version that would be suitable for DJ sets to be played at clubs. What I did then was I jumped into the session of the original version and I bounced out all the main parts of that version, which were basically just the vocal parts and the synth chords. And then I opened up a new session and dragged those parts in there and pitched them up to 126 BPM. Then I was just jamming around with ideas and seeing how to translate the vibe of the original song to this more up-tempo energy. So I opened up the session of the finished mix and we're gonna dive right in. So this is what the arrangement window looks like. Now to just once go over the basic elements of the song, it's pretty simple. There's first of all, obviously the vocal, then there are some synth chords, which are a bunch of layers. We're gonna go through them. Then there's the drums, which do contain a lot of different tracks and layers and uh, some cool programming. I'll show you all of that too. Uh, then of course there's the bass, which contains a couple of layers as well. And probably the most prominent part of this mix is the vocal chop, which is playing mainly in the drop. So then let's take a look at what's in the intro here. So when we take a listen to this, So there's a bunch of uh, loops playing and, and individual drum hits, but everything you can hear is things that, that I created myself. That's something that I can personally encourage you guys to do is, if you can, try to create your own content rather than taking some drum loops and basically finished material. So there's nothing wrong with using loops, but if you can try to avoid it, I think you have an advantage. So let me show you what I do in order to not use loops, but create my own content. So for example here, So it's really simple actually, it's just, which is this little ride, and then it's in a drum rack with two slots. First one is the ride, and the second one here is this little silent patch, which is really just a white noise, nothing else, with a very quick decay. And then they are just playing together in this, in this pattern here. With a little bit of Velocity automation, as you can see here below, that's what's giving it this human feel. This is just, this is just an open hi-hat, and then there are these claps here. The samples that I'm using for these loops are actually from my own sample pack. If you're interested in that, you can check it out on Splice. I have two sample packs up there. Yeah, so this is all going through this one group. And then I'm just applying a little bit of processing here. You can see there's an SSL compressor from UAD. Doing quite a lot actually. And then there's a saturator to make it a bit more dense. And I'm then also using this little tool here, which is the standard clip, which I really like to use in order to shave off transients and start shaping all these different group buses before uh, I'm hitting my master limiter. So that's just like something I like to do in the, in the chain of my processing. So as you can see here now in the display, 
I'm doing a lot in order to shave off the hard transients of the clap. So that's this element here that's really just like one part of this intro. Then uh, there is another clap here. Pretty simple. What else do we have? Well, there's of course the kick. Uh, the kick for this entire mix is a kick that I created a while ago for a remix that I made together with Alesso. Uh, that was my time remix and I made that kick with the serum patch. If you guys are interested, there is also a sample pack on 789.10.com that I have and in there, there are also those serum patches and one of that is also this kick drum. Then, just below here, there's one more thing playing. That's just a loop from, from the vocal and I've put a long reverb on it to create that nice texture that already gives you a sense of the, the key for the song, which is something that I really like to do generally. Did I forget anything? All right, this is also a cool little ear candy element. Let me play this solo. This is a piece that I found from by scanning through the whole vocal track. And this little piece here, it, it sounds like it's a percussion sound, but it was actually sort of like an artifact that came out of, out of the vocal stem. So I just randomly found that and found it sonically interesting. So I sampled that and then put a reverb after that with a long pre-delay. That's what you can see here. And then there's the reverb tail. And then I bounced that and reversed the reverb tail here in the beginning and put it in front so that the, the entire thing together sounds like. And this is an element that I used throughout the entire arrangement of the song because to me this is a nice element that people can recognize, you know, that, that adds some character to, to the entire song. And else there's, yeah, this little snare fill here, for example. And again, this snare fill is not just a loop, but I created that myself. It's really simple though, it's just this MIDI pattern here. Two slots again and a drum rack. And at the end here, I automated this little transpose knob here. So if you take a look at this, you can see that it goes down. So that creates that little effect there. Uh, fairly simple. Yeah, what else is in here? Then there is a second loop here. Let me show you that quickly as well. This is just for the build up. So it's just a bunch of little snare drums and this percussion sound here played by those MIDI patterns and a bit of automation. I guess this should be in here. Yeah, so this is just a pitch band automation on this snare drum. So that's what creates this riser effect. Same here, I guess. Pretty simple, but effective. And then here, what I'm doing right before it hits the break is, it's just a little sample of the vocal that I reversed and then put that echo on it. So you just get a feel for the tone of the voice that is gonna be introduced a little bit later. Okay, so that's the intro part. And now let's take a look at the break. Without you, without you, I 
wish you were an ocean, I would dive right into you. I wish you were a moment, I could always hold on to. I wish you were a sunset, promising that something new. I wish you were the morning, I could wake up next to you. So the main elements in the first break, uh, first thing would be the vocal, of course. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, this is a stem that I exported from the original project of the original mix. If you're interested in seeing how I created the original mix, then please let me know in the comments below and I can create a separate video on that as well. So I'll play you this on an empty audio track first so you can hear it. So this already had some uh, reverb and delay on it and also some EQing and compression. So it sounded pretty good already. All I did here was apply a bit more EQ because just so that it would blend in better with, uh, with my mix here for this version. And then there's one OTT here that I only used in a certain section though to make it sound a bit brighter. Then a little bit more compression. Tell me why I feel so strong about you. It's actually also adding quite a lot more compression, like 6 dB, as you can tell, and it's a very fast attack. It's also for the, for the purpose of this mix, I wanted to make sure that this vocal was really heavily compressed and sitting up front there uh, for that aggressive, in-your-face type of sound. So that's why I added this compressor as well. And then there is a de-esser here. This guy here, the Vice de-esser, that's my, personally my favorite de-esser on vocals. Tell me why I feel so strong about you. Yeah, that is nice. Um, and then that's pretty much it. There's one little effect rack here that I use to create a build-up effect that is in here coming in. So. I'm going to show you what this sounds like. That's this little cool effect and how I did this is first I took a little sample of the vocal which is this piece here. That's just a sample that I found somewhere in the vocal stem. So that's just that. Loop that. Then here started doubling the tempo and then doubling the tempo again. Guess I think until here. And then there's this little rack here that I built once. Let me reset the automation. Now when I start using it, I'm going to show you what's inside. It's a bunch of effects here. There is a reverb in there with some special settings and this auto pan effect, but let me just show you what it does. Yeah, so it's a cool chain. That you can see is uh, the frequency shifter in here is important. That's what creates that riser effect, and everything is mapped to this knob here. So, if you're interested in this, in something like this, like this rack here, also let me know in the comments below. If there's enough interest, then I'll drop a link to it so you guys can use it. So that's all the basics about the vocal, and then we have the synth chords here down below, uh, which consists of a few layers, especially. This one is really interesting, but let me first show you the first one up here. That's the OBX from Arturia. Uh, one word, first of all, that I got to tell you is I had to freeze a lot of these MIDI tracks simply because to save my CPU, even though I'm actually running this project on the new Mac Pro, but yeah. So much for that. Um, but what I like to do is, and this is also general advice, is uh, before I freeze and flatten any tracks, I have this folder here which is called track backups. So what I do is when I have the MIDI track, 
I drag and drop it into this folder so I have a backup of the original MIDI with all the plugins on it and everything as it was, and then I freeze it and flatten it into audio. So, for example, here now, if I want to show you what the actual patch looked like, I can just drag it in. And this is that. So it's pretty simple chords with the patch in the, in the new OBX from Arturia. I love this synth. This is one of my favorite new synths. Yeah, sounds sweet and really analog and old school vintage. That's a vibe that I really like. Just some EQ here first, and then uh, this is also a great one, the Valhalla Supermassive. I love it. This is like a mix of a reverb and a delay, and you can use it in creative ways. Uh, then there's an OTT afterwards, and then the RC20 Retro Color, which is also one of my favorite saturation plugins. Then after that is a UAD EQ, just this knee here, the 1073. That one is one of my go-to EQs that I use a lot of times on synths if I want to just color the sound in an interesting way without being surgical. And then comes a little, also a new toy that I really like to use a lot lately. That's the Thermal from Output. It's a distortion saturation plugin with really cool controls and interesting sounds. Well, this is all basic stuff, but then there's one trick here that I did on this sound that actually adds a lot to it, which is this Max for Life device. It's called Pitch Hack. And what it does is it creates an extra octave down of the, of the original sound. And then I'm blending it in here with, as you can see, it's only on 18%. Let me play it with to you with and without. Now without. And with. It's subtle, but it's there and you feel it. It just gives it a bit more fundament. So that's the OBX. And then next is this patch here, which is, I think, really interesting. I'll play to you in solo ones. So that's a complex patch. I'm going to show you how I made it. Um, where is this guy? It's right here. The grain scanner. Okay, so what's happening in here is it's the same chords playing. And then I use this, I think it's also a Max for Life device called Grain Scanner. And I put in one of my synth shots from my splice sample pack, but you could just use any sort of source, yeah, any kind of synth shot or maybe even percussion sounds or anything that is interesting. And then I added this LFO here, which is basically, it's routed to uh, the frequency of this filter here. So it creates this play. Because it's synced with the rate, I mean with the, with the song and the rate is one, it, uh, the filter opens up every time a new chord is hitting because it's set to the mode down here. That's a shape, so just a regular ramp down. And in between, there's just a little bit of play, so it, it sounds like a humanized effect. And below here, there is uh, one more layer, and this is just a stem from the original mix again, which is just some uh, organ sounds and later on some pianos playing. Yeah. So all together, they sound like this. And there's one more layer coming in here, which is a hive pluck sound. Together with the rest.
there's also this vocal texture playing in the background still, which I showed you before. It, it already started in the, in, in the intro. Yeah. So that sounds nice altogether. Those are basically the synths. And yeah, that's the break part. Then in the first build up here, I'm playing the same build up loop one more time that I already used in the intro section that I showed you, this guy. Only with the difference that there's another riser playing additionally, which is just a simple silent patch. And then another little uh, tight snare. Yeah, that's that. Together with this vocal riser that I already showed you. Uh, yeah, and then we are, and down below here, there's just some basic uh, risers and, and downlifters and stuff, just some effect sounds. And then we are hitting the first drop. So let's take a look at that. So if I play a section of the, of the drop to you guys first. Yeah, what was important to me for the overall feel and vibe of the drop is that it has that sort of house drive and vibe to it, you know, that house energy. That was really important for me to nail. So one of those key elements of housey drums are, of course, the open off hi-hat. And that's, that's playing right here. Then there's another additional percussion loop. Some claps. And then one thing here that is kind of interesting. This is a sound that I actually recorded with my iPhone very quickly and simply because I wanted to emphasize the groove that I was feeling and hearing. As you know, there's this vocal chop here, and if we listen to the vocal chop once in solo, there's this rhythm in there that I, that I heard, which is this So I felt that rhythm and I wanted to emphasize it or accentuate it in a way. So that's why I recorded this sound just with the iPhone. Um, and together they sound like this. I'm gonna exaggerate it a bit and put up the volume so you can really hear what it's doing. Then there's this little block sound here, just a percussion sound. And after eight bars, there's a couple more things coming in, just some, some uh, shakers and, and, a, and a ride. There's this guy here. And this ride. So all together, without the vocal chop, Okay, so those were basically all the drums for the drop. And next, let's take a look at the vocal chop, the main element. So I'll play it to you once again in solo. So this was pretty heavy uh, in terms of processing and plugins that I applied. So that's again why I had to freeze it, but I still also have the original tracks. So let me show you the first step. First thing I did was 
I took a sampler and I dragged the entire vocal stem into the sampler and then chopped it up into little pieces of the same length and then converted that into a drum rack. So this is what you can see here now. You have all these slices and they are basically then scanning through this whole vocal track. And then in order to come up with ideas, what I like to do is I play a loop of the beat and then I just jam around on the, on the, on the keyboard to find pieces and, and things that make sense and that sound interesting. So in the end, after a long time of playing around with it, I came up with this pattern here. <laughs> There's one interesting thing happening. First of all, there's an auto-tune effect, which is really kind of essential for the sound of this whole vocal chop. And then there is a reverb that is automated. And I automated it in a way to, in order to uh, fill those gaps in between and make it, again, more interesting sonically. If I turn off that reverb, it sounds like this. And with... Yeah, so that does a lot to the sound. And also, especially in conjunction with the OTT afterwards. So here, the order of the plugins is also important because I place the OTT after the reverb, so in order to compress the reverb heavily. So if I turn off the OTT, it's going to sound a lot more boring. It's, of course, also heavily compressing the entire original vocal. This is really what turns it into a lead sound, right? So with it... Then there's a saturator afterwards, some more overdrive, and another OTT, because why not? And then a Fab Filter Pro Q, which is just, a, in this case, a dynamic EQ, because there were some ringing tones and frequencies that were hurting in my ears. Without. Yeah. Some more glue compression afterwards and another compressor. This one isn't doing much though. The purpose is only to catch the fast peaks and transients in the beginning. Nothing more. And then another saturator because why not? It sounds great. If it sounds good, it's good. That should always be the motto. And then next we have the bass. So the bass consists of four layers that are playing up here. I'll play to you once in solo. So it's not that complicated actually. It's it's first of all it's two layers here which are creating the fundament. This is basically just a clean sign bass with a little bit of a punch in the beginning. If I play that solo I'm playing two layers here because the, the second one is playing one octave higher. That's because in this layer here I'm playing an F sharp, which is pretty low, and then it goes even lower here to E. E is that's just a really low frequency. So in order to fill that gap, I duplicated the layer and then played the same thing one octave higher only on those notes. And then there's a second layer which is the pigments bass. And that one sounds like this. That's just adding some tonality and also some stereo field to this sound. And last but not least, there is an 808 bass, which is this one. That's just adding punch and tonality to the bass, so it's not just that sub bass. And with the kick, then we got this. Then with the uh, drums. With 
Vocal Chopped. And the Synths. All right, so that was the drop. And then there's this part coming after that I think is really interesting. There's a lot of stuff going on. So let me play it to you once. So I added this section in before the second break, as I told you before, to have some ear candy elements and some interesting vocal and melody textures that weren't there before, just to spice it up. So let's take a look at these little vocal pieces. They sound like this. There's this piece here, which is actually a part of the vocal reversed. So I'll reverse it back in order to show you where it comes from. So it's that part reversed. And then I applied some filtering here in order to cut out all the high end and uh, some OTT again. Uh, and Saturn RC20 to really compress it hard. And then what makes the sound here are these effects, the thermal, the echo, and the reverb. that creates that interesting tail. So if I turn these off... And then the thermal... And then these guys... So that is this, and then here we have some more synths playing. This is a pad from the Repro 5 from UHE, sounds like this. Then again the same grain texture that I showed you before. And then here are some vintage, old-school bell sounds. So together... So then, with the vocal textures, we got this. And all of that is just combined with a simple re-space up here, which is just a serum patch. Yeah, and then a filtered kick. So that's pretty much all that's playing in this section. And then we're hitting the second break which begins with the verse again. I'll play you the whole section once first. So what's happening here is there's this half-tempo trapped kind of beat playing, uh, which I'm doing again to just spice it up and give the song some variety. So it's this 808 bass together with this 808 kick.
Then we have the vocal playing, and there's one interesting texture here playing in the background that adds a lot of warmth and weight to it. It's this here. This is again a part of the entire vocal, just reversed, so if I reverse it back, you'll hear where it's coming from. So just reversed. So this is the effect, and then I EQ'd it a lot, cutting out all the high end, another filter, then distorting it a lot, running it through this echo and this reverb, and together then we're getting, we're getting this. And I heard this melody that was kind of new and fresh to my ears that just came out of reversing this vocal, and because I liked it so much, I wanted to replay it with some synths in order to accentuate it more. So I took these Solina strings and replayed that melody that I was hearing, which is... So then together with all the synths and this layer, it sounds like this. Yeah, so pretty sweet, I think, and a lot of detail in there. So those are the most important elements of the second break. Yeah, there's these nice trap drums playing here. I'll play it to you in solo once. Yeah, that's that, and then a lot of little effect sounds here, some sweeps down and up keep it interesting. And then it's going into the second build-up and another round of the drop, which is really pretty much repeating the first drop and then going into the outro. All right, this was it. I think we covered everything about this song. As you can see, there's a lot of detail and work that goes into a production like this. But if you're asking me, this is exactly how you make a song stand out. And also, it's a way how you can create your own sonic fingerprint, so to speak. And personally, I really enjoy it and I hope you guys found it helpful. If so, please subscribe. If there's any topics that you want to know more about, please let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough interest, I'll make a separate video on that. Until then, see you.